a presidential task force is ready to rein in the National Security Agency. Sources say the panel's final report is likely to recommend sweeping changes in the NSA's mission. The review was ordered after Edward Snowden exposed government surveillance programs. Meanwhile, the NSA gave John Miller unprecedented access for his 60 Minutes report that will air this Sunday night. The man in charge of the agency, General Keith Alexander, says he wants to set the record straight. But what the NSA is really learning from Americans' phone conversations. If a terrorist is suspected of having contacts inside the United States, the NSA can query a database that contains the metadata of every phone call made in the U.S. going back five years. So you understand then, there might be a little confusion among Americans who read in the newspaper that the NSA has vacuumed up the records of the telephone calls of every man, woman, and child in the United States for a period of years, that sounds like spying on Americans. Right, and that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. There's no. You don't hear the calls. You don't hear the call. You Getting, don't see the names. You don't see the names. You just see this number called that number. The, this number, the to from number, the duration of the call and the date time group. That's all you get. And all we can do is tell the FBI that number is talking to somebody who is very bad. You ought to go look at it. But privacy advocates argue Americans' phone records should not sit in bulk at the NSA, searchable under a blanket court order. They believe the NSA should have to get a separate court order for each number and that the record should stay at the phone company. You get the, the bill from whatever the service provider is and you see who it's calling in America. You don't need to collect every American's phone numbers to do that. Well, the reality is, if you go and do a specific one for each, you have to tell the phone companies to keep those call detail records for a certain period of time. So if you don't have the data someplace, you can't search it. The other part that's important, phone companies, different phone companies have different sets of records. And these phone calls may go between different phone companies. If you only go to one company, you'll see what that phone company has, but you may not see what the other phone company has or the other. So by putting those together, we can see all of that essentially at one time. Before 9-11, did we have this capability? We did not. Is it a factor? Was it a factor? I believe it was. What General was Alexander is talking about that. is that two of the 9-11 hijackers, Khalid al-Midhar and Nawaf al-Hazmi, were in touch with an al-Qaeda safe house in Yemen. The NSA did not know their calls were coming from California, as they would today. I think this was the factor that allowed Madar to safely conduct his plot from California. We had all the other indicators, but no way of understanding that he was in California while others were in Florida and other places. Edward Snowden revealed another program called PRISM, which the NSA says is authorized under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA. PRISM is the program the NSA uses to target the internet communications of terrorists. It has the capability to capture emails, chats, video, and photos. But privacy experts believe the NSA's dragnet for terrorists on the internet may also be sweeping up information on a lot of Americans. No, that's not true. Under FISA, NSA can only target the communications of a U.S. person with a probable cause finding under a specific court order. A judge in the FISA court, which is the court that secretly hears the NSA cases and approves or disapproves your requests, said the NSA systematically transgressed both its own court-appointed limits and bulk internet data collection programs. There was nobody willfully or knowingly trying to break the law. So, John, we now have this recommendation from this panel suggesting uh, that there need to be sweeping changes. Uh, does General Alexander appreciate that, that there is a real movement out there to change the NSA, including shifting from military to civilian leadership? I think what, what General Alexander is, is grappling with here is he believes that the threat of terrorism is going up. You've got all these foreign fighters, uh, many Westerners who are, who are in Syria now who are going to be coming home. You have the situation in Syria, in Egypt, and I mean, across the region. And he says, this is not the time to start rearranging the deck chairs or particularly um, to take away the tools that they developed after 9-11 mm -hmm. 
um, to stop a, an attack on U.S. soil or to give them early warning. But given that last question you asked about the criticism from the FISA court and General Alexander's response was quite lawyerly saying no one willfully or knowingly broke the law. I mean, that's the concern that this, because it's at people's fingertips, including Edward Snowden and others, that there have been abuses. So out of 38,000 employees, they have a dozen, 12 cases of actual willful abuse. Um, and, and that, if you measure that against a hospital, a police department, uh, any organization, uh, those are very small numbers. What he's talking about is these are highly technical systems under very complex legal guidelines run by human beings who can make mistakes. And he said when they find those, they report them and they fix them. And the court acknowledges, acknowledged that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John. Thanks. Thank you.